Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is the Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So another video I've been wanting to do for a long time because I think it's going to be a big help to a lot of us. As crafters, we hand sew, and I love a hand stitch line. But at some point, we want or need to jump up to an industrial machine. What? What a scary thought. At least it was for me because I'm going to drop some good money on a product I don't even know if I can operate. How do I sew? How do I set my stitch length, my tension, wind a bobbin? These are all so easy to explain, you're going to be surprised. Even if you've never sat down at a sewing machine, you'll be setting a beautiful stitch line in one afternoon. So let's start here. Let's see if this helps. I wasn't really sure I wanted to add this segment into this video, but when I looked back, there was one question I didn't want to ask because I felt like it was a stupid question. How does a sewing machine actually work? Well, if you're anything like I am, if I can actually see how something works, that answers all kinds of questions. And I'm hoping this is going to do the same thing. So this is all we're doing with a sewing machine. Let's consider this a piece of leather. So we've got our top thread and we've got our bottom thread or a bobbin thread. All that's going to happen here is that top thread is going to circle the bottom thread. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now notice too, I can move that back and forth. That's our tension. We're going to talk about that. Okay, but let's do this again. I'm going to circle and again. Let's try this one more. Well, you know what? Look at that. We've got an absolute mess going there and that is just going to get worse. Okay, here's the easy answer. And whoever came up with this, an absolute genius. Now let's actually take a smaller spool or a bobbin. Let's connect this here. So now what's going to happen, there we go, give that some tension, is our top thread is simply going to circle that bobbin. And going to do it again. So now we can go as far as we want, or as far as we have thread on our bobbin. That's how a sewing machine works. But again, we'll come back to this in just a minute. But let's step back over to our machine. When I jumped up to an industrial machine, my first stress point was, how am I going to learn to thread this? This looks exceptionally complicated. All told, it really isn't. Everything makes sense. We've got a good video on setting up the machine, and it's in the owner's manual. But if you're new with this and you're stressed about it, there's a simple trick. So say we need to break our thread. We want to wind a bobbin or change colors. Let's just cut our thread. Let's take our second thread right here. Let's just tie a good knot. Okay, we've got a good knot. Now, let's lift our presser foot. Good. And you'll notice my needle is on the downstroke. That's when the machine is starting to release some tension. So let's find our top thread and let's simply pull that thread through. How easy is that, right? Now, that big knot is not going to go through our needle. So let's pull out some extra thread, clip that. Now, all we have to do is thread our needle. And we always want to go from the outside in. Now, the nice thing about an industrial machine, larger needle, much easier to get the thread through that eye. Let's lift our foot, go through that, and there we are. We are ready to sew. How easy is that? Okay, next up, our lower thread, our bobbin. Let's start by winding one. One of the things that really tripped me up in the beginning was not winding my bobbin tight enough. That gave me all kinds of problems sewing. Well, it's an easy fix here, but also, side note, I'm operating this machine without the guard on it. We need the guard on it, keep those moving parts hidden, but we're just trying to see what we're doing here. Okay, so we're going to come down from our spool. We're going to go through, through our two tension plates, and on this eye, we're going to come from the left to the right. Okay, we're ready to wind a bobbin, but the tension, here's what I'm talking about. So let's take this screw and go all the way out, and you'll notice we'll see this again, but the settings on this are not minute by any means. So let's come all the way out. Notice how easily the thread throughs, moves through there. That's not what we're looking for. Let's take this, and I'm going to count in half turns. Let's come down about six half turns. There we go. Now I can feel some tension. Let's come down two more half turns. 
There we are. That's going to wind a good bobbin. Okay, so on this end, easily done. Let's just tie a slip knot. There we go. If I can get my thread to work with me. There we go. Okay, let's slip that onto our bobbin. And now our bobbin right here. We've got a post. It's got a hole right here. Let's slide the bobbin on. And with this extra thread, there we go. Let's run that through that small hole. Actually, it's not really a small hole. It's pretty easy to see. And there's our thread. Get my fingers to work. It's cold in my shop today. Okay, so now I'm going to hold this. The way this works is I'm going to press this forward. That's going to engage the belt. That's actually what's going to wind a bobbin. And we can wind a bobbin while we're sewing, but we've got to have two spools of thread. So now let's just start. One point though, let me make sure we got this. On this end, let's take the thread out of the needle. We can't see that, but let's just take our thread out of the needle. Okay, so down here, there we go. All I had to do was hold that thread long enough to get some good tension on that so it will draw the thread. But now what I'd like to do, let's take that back out and clip it off just so we've got that out of the way. And unwind that. Let's pull that tight and just clip it off about right there. Okay, so now we're winding our bobbin. And there we are. And you'll notice when the bobbin's full, it will disengage. All right, let's jump to the other end. Now, before we change our bobbin, two things and they make perfect sense. Well, first off, we want our needle in the up position. We don't want that down in the bobbin when we're trying to change it. Secondly, let's lift our foot. We've got a lever right here. Let's just lift the foot, okay? So let's lift the head of this. And you'll notice we've got an oil pan. That's one of the things I love about the 303, self-oiling. Now there's a couple of spots on this where we need to add the oil. But if I forget to oil it, Actually, I'm not worried about it. My machine is always oiled. Okay, again, enough with the sales pitch. So right here is our bobbin. And you notice we've got a bar across here. Curves up right at the end, right about the two o'clock position. We lift that, yeah, my hands are gonna be a problem. We lift that, and there's our bobbin case. So let's take the old bobbin out. And for the new bobbin, the one trick here. So we're going to insert this like this. So I want the thread coming off the top of the spool away from me. And then right here, notice we've got a small angled cut. Let's pull our thread around to that cut. Good. And let's pop it down in there. Just right. It sits right in there easily. Okay. So again, two o'clock position. And our bobbin's in. Notice how easy it is in and out, but we can hear it click. We know it's good. That's all we have to do. We wound a black bobbin. Well, it was a little easier to see against the white background of the table. But what I'd like to do, I'm going to change out this bobbin for a white thread, make it a little bit easier to see that bobbin thread pop up. We've got our white bobbin thread in, so I'm going to take my top thread, and I'm just going to give this a little bit of tension. So we're on our downstroke. Let's go through, come back up. Now, as we go down again, there's our bobbin. See it pop right up there? There we are. We're ready to sew, except let's don't forget, and I always do, let's make sure we drop our arm before we sew. Setting good tension is important, but it's not complicated by any means, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Now, I don't know if this is a great example or not, but I hope it's going to help. Well, let's think about this. So right here, I've, dro I've dropped a bobbin. Let's consider this is our bobbin thread. That's our top thread, okay? So in a perfect world, which I have yet to live in, but in a perfect world, I want my loop right in the middle of my leather or leathers. Well, if we think about it, if we add more tension on the bobbin side, it's going to pull that loop down. So what's going to happen on the back side of our leather or our stitch line, notice I can see our top thread. It's actually pulling that through the leather. We don't want that. On the opposite side, if I add too much tension on the top side, it's going to bring that loop way up here. So what we've got now 
is now I can actually see the loop on the top grain of the leather. Again, we don't want that. We want that loop right in the middle, okay? Let's make this as easy as possible. Let's don't adjust our bobbin thread at all. Let's leave that factory setting, and we're just gonna use our top thread to set our tension to get that loop to fall inside our leather. Okay, I hope this is a good example. Let's step back to our machine and actually look at how we do this. Here's our tension knob right here. So clockwise, more tension, counterclockwise, less. Actually what this is doing, our thread's running between two plates. As we add more pressure, it adds more pressure to the thread. That's where our tension's coming from. Now I've got a small blue mark here, or actually it's just some tape, just like when we're winding our bobbins. This is not minute, small settings. We can actually go a full turn or more to try to bring that loop up or down. Okay, we've talked enough about sewing. How about let's knock in a short stitch line? Let's start right here. Our 303 has a servo motor. Basically, it's an adjustable speed motor. Therefore, we've got a speed control on the motor itself. The big point here, if we're not a professional sewer, we don't come out of a production shop, we can slow this machine down so slow that we feel like we have absolute control. So, first thing I wanna do, let's give some tension to our thread. Basically, we're adding the tension that the material will once we start to sew. Now, let's slow this down. Yeah, look at that. Again, I am not worried about a stitch line now. I've got complete control. So let's get a little distance on this, and we're gonna look at our thread. And one more, let's go down. We're gonna leave our needle in the material because if we wanna turn our project, all we do is lift our foot and turn that on the needle. It's a good looking stitch line. How about on the back? Good, my tension is set just right. I can't see my top thread here. I can't see my bobbin thread here. So let's come across. And once again, drop our needle in, lift our foot. So now let's back stitch. So let's get a little distance on us. Good, now what we can do is again, needle in the material, we can turn this around and simply back stitch. Easy enough, okay? But we can also do it this way because our machine actually has a reverse on it. And there we are. Let's get our needle in the down position. Let's lower our reverse bar. And look at that. How easy is that? And I always like to do one more stitch forward and there we are. Now, to release the material, I'm gonna get my needle back on its way down. It's starting to release tension. Now I can lift my foot and pull that out. How easy is this machine to operate? I absolutely love it. For the most part, this is information that's common across industrial machines. Now, I'm a little bit biased. I work for Weaver, I love the 303. But let me toss this out there as well. I've had three different brands of machines and I've yet to have a machine that's as easy to operate and maintain as my 303. Just tossing that out there. But nonetheless, I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.